Corsair has dipped its toes in the dual chamber case market before with the 280X, 680X and the Air 540. But today Corsair makes its return to dual chamber cases with the 2500 series and the 6500 series. In this video we take a look at the larger 6500X with dual tempered glass panels, support for EATX motherboards and reverse connector motherboards including MSI Project Zero and Asus BTF. But can this new dual chamber case series from Corsair compete with the likes of the Lianli O11D series, the height Y60 and Y70 and the extremely good value of the Montec King 95? Unleash the power of RTX 4080 Super with superior liquid cooling. So this is the new Corsair 6500X. It's part of the 6500 series, which also includes a 6500D airflow. And there is another 6500X RGB coming that includes fans. Both the 6500D and the 6500X come without any fans pre-installed. This is available to purchase now in the US. It has an MSRP price of $199.99 US dollars. In the UK, it's priced at $179.99 British pounds. It's available in this white colour scheme and it's also available in black and there are some optional panels so like wood effects and some different panels you can buy for this case separately if you want to change the look. The 6500 series gives the user the option to choose between airflow and glass configurations. The series also offers several optional accessories including alternate material outer panels. It supports reverse connector motherboards including MSI Project Zero and Asus BTF. The 6500 series includes a robust steel frame, great cooling options, multiple cutouts and cable routing options and a range of accessories for specific build requirements such as vertical G GPU mounts and riser cables. The 6500X showcases the build behind two tempered glass side panels while the 6500D switches the focus to optimal airflow and cooling. All 6500 series cases are made for Corsair IQ Link components with IQ Link cable hooks built into the chassis for easy cable routing. So let's take a look at the case in a bit more detail. So the first thing to look at is how you get the side panels off and how you get into the case. Well, the glass side panel on the left hand side that is actually on a hinge system. So let's pull it open at the bottom and it swings open. There is a screw in the top of the hinge. Remove that and then the side panel just lifts off. And you can see it is a completely clear tempered glass side panel. There's no tint to that glass at all. The other side panel has a couple of captive thumb screws and then it just pops off. You can see this is a completely vented mesh side panel. There is a dust filter that covers the whole of that, but weirdly you've got this little plastic frame here. Not exactly sure what that's for. I'm guessing maybe it's to stop the dust filter from being kind of sucked into the fans, I think. That's the only thing I can think of why that is at that side of the case, but it obviously gives the mesh filter some rigidity and it can't be sucked into the fans. There's a couple of screws to take out to remove the front tempered glass. Just one at the bottom and one at the top. Once you've got those screws removed, you can kind of swing this outwards and it just releases from the frame. And again, this is a completely clear tempered glass, no tint on that. So you'll be able to see straight inside your system and all your wonderful components that you've installed in there, no problem. These are the panels removed. So this front top and this trim panel along the top here, they also remove and they are the ones that can be interchanged for the optional panels that you can buy from the Corsair web store. Removing the tempered glass removes the support for this top corner of the case. So if you are building a system inside with that tempered glass removed, just be careful of that because if you lean on that, it could cause a problem and bend the chassis. At the top, there's another removable mesh panel. It doesn't technically have a dust filter in there, but it's quite fine, the mesh, so it probably will filter out some of the larger dust particles. Front IO connectivity consists of four USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A ports, one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C port, and a combined 3.5 millimeter jack for audio. There's also a power and reset button up there. I like that Corsair has put four USB Type A ports up there. That's good. In a lot of cases, you might only see two. These panels that are removable, that's really easy. For this one, you take off one screw, 
slide it backwards that one pulls out these are made from really thick steel so they add a bit of weight to the case the other panel remove two screws from the back and then that one slides out the front panel that's held on with six screws remove those six screws then you can change all these panels for the alternate material panels available inside the case it is pretty much what you call a traditional style of layout for dual chamber cases this side motherboard graphics card cooling is all installed then in the other side it's potentially more cooling in the other side on the side bracket but power supply all your cables the cable management is all in there storage is all in the second compartment inside this main compartment you've got plenty of cooling options so on both the roof and the floor of the case you can fit up to a 3 120 or 3 140 millimeter fans or up to a 360 millimeter radiator so obviously that's 360 280 and 240 radiators installed in the roof and the floor i would have liked to have seen support for 420 millimeter radiators maybe it's possible if you do a bit of modification to the case but not officially in the spec it doesn't list for 20 mil rads which is a bit of a shame this side mount at the right hand side of the case that supports only 120 millimeter fans so 320 millimeter fans can be installed on that side mount or up to a 360 millimeter radiator because it only supports 120 fans that means 240 or 360 millimeter radiator only i'm surprised that you can't install 140 fans in there floor and the roof both support 140s it would naturally look better if you're building a system with 140 mil fans to have them on the floor in the roof and 140s down the side so again it's a bit of a shame that you can't install 140s in there motherboard tray is interesting because it supports up to e atx motherboards that also includes atx micro atx and mini itx but it also has all the cutouts for reverse connector motherboards so asus btf motherboards and msi project zero in terms of hardware support as i say eatx motherboards or up to eatx motherboards are supported graphics cards are up to 400 millimeters long in the 6500x with the glass if you are using the 6500d airflow which has a mesh front panel and you have a radiator at the front I think that reduces the maximum graphics card length to something like 370 millimeters. Maximum CPU cooler height is 190 millimeters tall and maximum power supply size is ATX up to 225 millimeters long. The roof and floor mounts, they are both fixed in position so they don't have removable brackets for radiators. However, the side mount that is removable, it's just a single screw at the top. Take out the screw at the top and then it just holds in place at the bottom. You can also move this to a position here to move it forwards a bit. So maybe if you're just installing fans on here and you've got a radiator at the top, you want it in the forward position. But if you're planning on installing a big radiator at the top and a big radiator on the side, you probably want it at its further back position. Turn to the back of the case, there's plenty of ventilation in here at the top there's a mount for fans on the rear also 120 or 140 fans or 120 or 140 radiators can be installed in there cut out for the rear motherboard io there's eight horizontal pcie slots there's another vent down at the side of the pcie slots and what looks like mounts maybe for a pump or pump res combo if you're custom water cooling and then further down there's another vent and there's also a velcro strap there for cable management so you can you know put your power cable, HDMI and all your rear cables through that to neaten them up. There's also a little panel here. I believe that is for potentially future extensions of IQ Link. So potentially Corsair is going to introduce products that are extended onto your desktop that support IQ Link. So that is where the port will be fastened to on the case for that. Power supply mount there, ATX power supply. And then at the top here, this is removable another vented panel and here are two 3.5 inch drive bay mounts install your drives to there and they slot in and out and then around this right hand side you can see the radiator and fan mount in its further back position is really close to the side panel so i'm guessing that's why there's that plastic reinforcing on the dust filter on the side panel to just stop it getting sucked up to the fans and causing some kind of air flow restriction so we know there's two 3.5 inch hard drive bays that are installed in this caddy but there's also two 2.5 inch drives that can be mounted on 
these removable drive sleds. So they're just held in place with a thumb screw. Screw your drive to that and then just pop those back in position. They are all the hard drive or storage mounts all contained into this bracket. That bracket is removable, so there's a couple of screws to remove. And then that whole drive cage just hooks in place and that can be removed as one whole unit. And you can see the back of the motherboard tray with all the cutouts for BTF and Project Zero. Up at the top, there's some large cutouts for cable management with rubber grommets on. They're improved rubber grommets on the 6500 series. There's several more cutouts down the side here with also rubber grommets on. And this small panel here, that's also removable. I believe that's just a, a trim panel for hiding cables when you've got the radiator mount at its furthest back position. So I believe you just remove one screw and then that slides up. That panel can be removed. Good to see that all the front IO cables are all white in this white version. In the black version, those are black. Some cases, they leave the cables black. Good that Corsair's thought about those small details and put white cables into the white case. And onto the floor of the case, not a lot to talk about on the floor. There's a large vented section that is covered by a dust filter and that pulls out from the front of the case really easily. It's one of those nylon dust filters inside a plastic frame, so the better quality type of filter. You can see then that opens up the bottom of the case. Like I say on there, you can fit up to a 360 millimeter radiator or three 120, three 140 millimeter fans. There's also four feet on the corners of the case. The case is very sturdy when it stood up. I've seen some cases recently where the feet are arranged a bit differently and they have a lot of wobble to them. The feet are approximately 25 millimeters tall, so that should give the case enough ground clearance for airflow into the floor of the case, which will be the cold airflow intake path on this case since it has the glass front and you can't install fans or radiators on the front of the case. If you're looking for a new chair, then you should definitely check out Boolies. I'm currently sat on their Ninja Pro gaming chair, which is one of three models from their gaming series alongside the Elite and the Master. So if you're looking for something new to stick in your setup that you can sit on and game and work, then I recommend definitely checking out Boolies.co.uk. So onto the build phase of the review. For the build, I'm using an Intel Core i9-14900K CPU. Motherboard is the Z790 Aorus Pro X. Graphics is the RTX 4080 Aero, also from Gigabyte. Memory is the Corsair Dominator Titanium in white. This is a 48 gigabyte kit, so two 24 gigabyte modules. DDR5, 7,000 mega transfers per second. Storage, it's just a single M.2 drive. It's the Corsair MP700, it's just a 110 terabyte drive but it's PCIe Gen 5. For cooling I'm using the Corsair IQ Link H150i LCD so that's a 360 millimeter only one liquid cooler with an LCD screen and then for case fans because you don't get any case fans with the 6500 series I'm using these Corsair QX140 RGB they're IQ Link compatible fans but I've just realized that I only have QX140s. The case only supports 120s in that side mount. Ideally, I wanted floor and side intake with exhaust on the roof using the AIO. But that might cause a problem because the side mount only supports 120 fans. So what I'm going to try and do is modify that side mount to fit 140 millimeter fans. I'm not sure if it's possible. I've done this before in the 7000D airflow. It was possible in that. I'm not sure on this, but I'll give it a try and it'll be a bit of useful info for anybody thinking of buying this case that wants to use all 140 fans. So let's get on with the build and see how it turns out. The only accessories that come with the case are this little plastic box with assorted screws, plenty of fan screws. There's some zip ties in there. They are black though. I would have preferred white zip ties with the white case and a adapter cable for the front panel connection. As you can see, build is complete. Took a little longer than I expected with all the fans and the IQ link and setting all that up. But overall, it was a pretty easy case to build a system with. There's a few things to mention, which I'll go over in a moment. 
But first, let's take a look at the thermal performance. As usual, the thermal performance test is a combined Cinebench R23 and 3D Mark Speedway run simultaneously for 30 minutes. We tested the case in several configurations with the case fans at a fixed RPM and the AIO cooler fans running the extreme profile in IQ. In either configuration, both the CPU and GPU temperatures are consistent. Removing the tempered glass side panel did not affect the CPU or GPU temperature, but there is a small reduction in CPU temperature with the top panel and dust filters removed, which might suggest the top panel is a little airflow restrictive, but it's of no major concern. The CPU package power was a little higher in this configuration since the CPU frequency increased approximately by 25 megahertz across all the P cores due to the cooler CPU temperature. But overall, temperatures are right on what we would expect from the CPU and GPU configuration in a good airflow case. Similar to thermal performance, removing panels had little effect on noise output. Only a small increase in noise is noticed when removing the side glass panel. The noise output will all depend on how you configure your fan speeds in this case as there are no noise reducing features built into the case panels. So optimizing fan curves manually to suit your noise requirements is key. So thermal performance is good. The case certainly looks good with the system built and plenty of IQ link hardware inside. It is an easy case to build in there's plenty of space to work with and there's good hardware support for EATX motherboards reverse connector motherboards I don't expect to see those becoming mainstream anytime soon there's plenty of cooling options multiple 360 millimeter radiators can be installed in the case and lots of fans up to 140 millimeter I did manage to install 140 millimeter fans as you can see on that side panel it's slightly disappointing that from the factory it doesn't support 140 millimeter fans but it can quite easily be modded that side panel to be able to install 340 mil fans on there and it's also slightly disappointing that the case doesn't support 420 millimeter radiators a few other things i noticed during the build so this hard drive cage I ended up leaving out because it's difficult or almost impossible to reinstall that hard drive cage once you have installed the power supply. Also, the space between the power supply and the back of the motherboard tray could do with being a few millimeters wider so you can feed down the IQ link cables behind the power supply. I found that useful in this build. I did actually have to take the power supply back out to feed those cables down, which was a bit more time consuming. The graphics card, alignment so the screw hole alignment in the actual PCI slots on the case didn't line up perfectly I had to kind of push them in a little to line them up with the graphics card screw holes and the screws that are used on the PCI slots they're really fiddly the heads on them are really small so it's difficult to use them as thumb screws it's really fiddly and the actual Phillips head that is punched into the head of the screw it's only just big enough for a Phillips number two screwdriver, so they could be improved. The larger type thumb screws found on the back of the case, they would be better to be used on the PCIe slots too. The overall build quality of the case is very good. I like these big chunky steel panels that give the case a bit of weight. It's a very rigid case when it's all built up with all the side panels on. Having the feet on all four corners means it's no chance of it tipping over very easily, so it's the usual high quality that we'd expect from Corsair but there are a few things that annoy me like these black screws on the tempered glass side panel for the hinges they should at least be white on this white version or the hinge should be bonded to the glass on the inside the other black screws as well don't really fit in with the white theme I'd prefer to see those either white or silver and this tempered glass door it doesn't shut really well the hinges must have dropped or something but it, it's just not brilliant how that closes you do have to lift the door slightly to get it to close so overall build quality is good but there are just those few minor niggles i have with the case another thing i noticed during the build that i would have preferred to have seen in the case that isn't there is removable brackets on the top and the floor for the fans and the radiators if you want to install fans on the floor, you have to tip the case over. So if you've got a system built inside there, it's quite heavy to tip over. 
to install or remove fans that would be a lot easier if you could take the bracket out install the fans on the desk and then put it back in place it would also be easier to connect up the iq link cables if you could move the brackets for the fans on the floor slightly again with the top there's no removable fan or radiator bracket it's fixed to the top of the case you can obviously remove the top panel to install the screws but again it limits the access you've got inside the case because if you forget to install something or connect something like the EPS power or some fan connectors or something at the top of the case it is quite fiddly trying to get to it afterwards with an AIO installed in there if it had removable fan brackets you would be able to just slightly lift them and gain access to the top of the motherboard easier so there's not a lot of modularity to this case something like the Lianli O11 Dynamic Evo I think it's a lot better in terms of those modular features like removable fan brackets and the front IO you can change the positioning of that that is fixed in the Corsair 6500X and obviously with cases like the O11D Evo you can even invert the whole orientation of the case you don't have those options with this 6500X. And the other thing is the cable management around the second chamber. There's nothing in there that gives you any straps or cable ties. There are the eyelets to use like zip ties on, but there's no straps or anything really to help you out with the cable management, which you do get in something like the O11D Evo. But it's an optional extra in the 6500X, which should be included. We take price into consideration. The 6500X and the O11D Evo are priced quite similar, but obviously you've got those options with the O11D that you don't get with the 6500X. You've also got other cases like the Montec King 95, which is a similar dual chain design similar hardware support similar cooling support in the King 95 but that is significantly cheaper so this 6500X it's okay for what it is and what it does but it kind of leaves you wanting more so that's the Corsair 6500X dual chamber case let me know what you think of the case in the comment section if you've enjoyed watching this review give us a thumbs up Hit the subscribe button if you've not already subscribed to KitGuru. And if you enjoy what we do here at KitGuru and you want to help support us, you can always head over to the store, pick up some merch, or you could even subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to our website.